Hello, everybody. And um, welcome back to the Makidam universe of collecting, my series on which I show off my, my collections and stuff. Um, I used to do these uh, years back. I believe it was in 2015. I did uh, start doing them at the end of, of 2020. However, because of certain... Uh, things I wasn't able to finish them in time, so I got rid of those and I'm starting fresh again now that my collection has basically grown on certain things a lot more and I thought um, by the time a lot of people saw those videos uh, it would have already been made redundant so I thought um, I'd delete those ones and you know just um, now that I kind of settled down now after you know birthdays and stuff that I'll show you my collection now in case anyone's you know, interested. You know, I, I'm a huge collector of physical media and, you know, I, I always feel like it's important to, you know, own the stuff that you're passionate about. So the first video we're going to talk about, the first series that we're going to talk about is music. As you can see, I don't have a lot of CDs, but it is um, slightly growing. And um, as part as well, there's another part to this that um, has definitely improved since the last time uh, in the marathon series as the last one I did I didn't have any of this particular type of music so uh, shall we get into it let's get into it so as you could probably tell just by looking at this that I'm a huge um, rock fan I like basically any kind of music uh, with the exception of really um, modern-ishy pop songs. Uh, but my main focus, my, one of my main passions is rock music. And as you can tell by looking at the first handful of CDs, um, it is ACDC. Uh, one of my favourite bands, if not my favourite band of all time, the Australian Rockers. Um, known for just having this, this wonderful energy about all their music. So... Uh, yeah, one of my favorite bands. Uh, we kick off with Dirty D's Dunder Chi. Um, brilliant album. It's one of the uh, one of their first big albums that uh, really hit it off outside of Australia. Um, it's a very strange cover. Like, what? I don't get it. <laughs> but um, you know, we've got Dirty D's Dunder Chi. I believe it's got. Uh, oh, Ride On's a good track. Rocker, Problem Child, yeah, all the great stuff. Then you have, of course, Let There Be Rock, uh, which some people I've heard actually cited as their favourite, which, um, you know, power to them. It's strange because some of the songs in here were actually released before. Uh, there's a great video about um, the history of ACD album, ACDC albums uh, by James Rolfe from... Um, Cinematica, if you're interested. But uh, Let There Be Rock is one of the best albums. That art cover is stunning, man. You can't tell by the camera, I don't think, but it's essentially a drawing, a painting. Um, it's not like a proper photograph, which I don't know, that, like, that light from the cloud behind the logo onto Angus Young. It's just stunning. And also you've got, you know, Let There Be Rock, of course, but you've got a whole lot of roses as well. Um, and uh, Dog Eat Dog. You know, you just you just got some bangers in here. Uh, Hell Ain't a Bad Place to Be. Um, yes, you might be surprised. I don't actually have Highway to Hell. But, of course, I do have Back in Black. The first album with um, Brian Johnson on vocals after the passing of Bon, uh, bon Scott. Um, and, you know, this album is the second best-selling album of all time for a reason. You got Back in Black. You got Shoot the Thrill. You got um, Let Me Put My Love Into You. You've got Hell's Bells. You've got Rock and Roll, Ain't Noise Pollution. You got, um, what's that one with the legs? Uh, shake a leg, you know, and of course you got back in black, you know, it's, it's just an understatement to say that this album is fantastic, but it's actually 
not my favourite album. I really, I one of the people that actually prefers the bar, the the Brian Johnson era of ACDC. I'm um, that's like the version of their music that I personally like. I like Bon Scott, of course, but I like Brian Johnson um, a bit more. But this isn't actually my favourite album from uh, ACDC, and it's not even my favourite album of this, of this era. My favourite album of ACDC is For Those About To Rock. Great cover, great music. For Those About To Rock is this just this symphony of brilliant rock and roll music. You've also got um, COD, Call of the Devil. You've also got um, Evil Walks. You've got um, uh, Let uh, let get it up. You got inject the venom. Oh my God, just looking at oh, night of the long knife. That is that is a banging song. Uh, yeah, and then you've got um, who made who, which is actually better known as the soundtrack to Maximum Overdrive. Yeah, for some reason. Um, uh, ACDC was hired to do the music for Maximum Overdrive, and essentially what they did is it's just a combination of of a handful of their songs, and I believe three or two songs were made for the film specifically. One is of course Who Made Who, and another one is actually a instrumental piece, which is very rare, and I would wish that ACDC did some more instrumental pieces. Personally, I really I really enjoyed that. Then you got um blow up your TV, uh, blow up your video. Sorry, um, very underrated. A lot of people don't talk about this album, but it's got some really great bangers. Um, Money talks, uh, Heat Seeker. Uh, those two particularly are some of my favourite songs. Um, and that that cover, man, that cover with uh, with Angus Young smashing through the camera, uh, through the TV, through the video. Blow up your TV. Blow up your video, man. Sorry, I don't know why I get blow up the TV. Blow up your video, man. And of course, you've got Razor Edge. Which, you know, you've got Razor Edge. You've got Mistress for Christmas. Um, you've got uh, All Hail Caesar. But that's not why people remember this album. They remember it for two reasons. One, that awesome cover. Two, Thunderstruck. It's one of their most popular songs, probably the second popular, most popular song in the Brian Johnson era, uh, just after, of course, Back in Black. But yeah, this, you know, it's one of their best albums of all time, man, and it's easy to see why. Uh, Ball Breaker. Wait, hold on. Oh, Hail Caesar's on this one. I do apologise. Um, Ball Breaker is another one where it's really underrated. It probably has my favourite artwork. Um, you've got Angus Young here, and you've got the um, like the artwork is act like the the logo is actually interblended into the art style, and you've got this building in the background. It just looks really cool, man. Um, but I find it's a very underrated album. Not a lot of people talk about this one. You got Hard as a Rock. You got Covered You in Oil. You've got uh, Love Bomb. You know, just just some really great bangers in here. And uh, my latest ACDC album, which has this uh, really cool cover, and that cool, is uh, Rock and Bust. Personally, I thought that the way that they built this up, it was kind of disappointing. There was some great tracks here, but for ACDC, I felt like like it's still a really high, well-made album. But for ACDC, this is probably a low point, in my opinion. However, ACDC at their low point is still goddamn awesome. Rock and Bust is a brilliant track. You've also got Play Ball, uh, Rock the Blues Away, Miss Adventure, Dog of War. Dogs of War is a really, that's a really good one. Now, I've only got um, two Black Sabbaths. Um, the only album really I have is Paranoid, which is, you know, it's Black Sabbath. It's the, the album that made, made, which made them. You know, you've got Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath, and then you go to Paranoid, which has not one, not two, 
but three of their most biggest songs of all time. You got Paranoid, you've got Iron Man, which became big because of the movie, and then you've got uh, Changes, which is from this album. Um, yeah, oh, and War Pigs is probably one of my favourite songs. Just stunning. Also, the artwork is just really bizarre. They've done a long exposure of some guy in like a really crappy knight costume. I don't get it. Apparently, that's supposed to be the War Pig from the song War Pig, which, going by the song, it has nothing to do with it. War Pigs is about like polit greedy politicians. It's really bizarre. And I have the Greatest Hits. Which, I'm not usually a fan. I don't really collect greatest hits. However, you know, people know I'm a fan of Black Sabbath and stuff. Um, so, most of these greatest hits are from people buying them for me. I don't buy greatest hits for myself. But, um, yeah, um, I keep this on in case I, you know, I don't complete Black Sabbath. I do plan on buying basically every Black Sabbath album. But, yeah, I... And it, my main issue with this one is that all my favourite songs that are in here are already on this album. So it's kind of redundant. Apart from some re few songs, I can't remember if um, Crazy Train is on here. I can't see it. But yeah, it's strange because most of the songs are from the original album. And then and speaking of another collection, we've got Dio. I am a huge fan of Dio. Uh, one of my favourite songs is uh, Rainbow in the Dark. Um, just stunning. And when he did uh, when he did the vocals for Black Sabbath, I really enjoyed. And when he did Rainbow as well, really cool. And I also like that song he did with uh, Denacious D. So this is my this is really sadly my, the only Dio album I have. I will collect more, but um, for now, that's all I got. And now for my only, again, strange how I only own one album from an artist that I like. Queen, News of the World, probably just, just a really great album. I remember as a kid, um, my uncle used to have this on vinyl and being just absolutely drawn to that cover of the Iron Giant-like uh, figure holding the band. And on the vinyl, it like falls out reveal them more of the artwork it was just really cool to see i remember just being absolutely stunned by the artwork but this is the album that starts off with uh we will rock you which you know you know it's 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 queen it's one of the most catchiest bands and that song is one of the most catchiest songs ever you just you just do that and People in the workplace just start singing along and just start beat the, doing the beat to the tune. You know, it's just so goddamn catchy. Um, this is the only CD I own of Fleetwood Mac, which is, again, a Greatest Hits. This one is actually the only Greatest Hits I bought for myself. The reason I bought it is because I actually uh, listened to this one as a kid. Um, I believe one of my parents owned it. Um, but their copy has got lost the time, so I rebought this. Um, and as you, as I will, as you will later learn, I own a lot of the covers. I own a lot of albums with the song "Chain" in it, as you will, as you'll later see uh, later on in the video. But this is "Chain One." Then, so uh, you know, this is probably one of my favorite albums, easily my favorite greatest hits out there. Uh, Fleetwood Mac is just such an underrated band. You know, Stevie Nicks. I just have to say her name and automatically great music just comes into your head. Fantastic. Now it's on to my favourite album of all time, which a lot of people haven't actually heard of. In fact, this band usually goes under the radar. And when I ask people, Usually my reply, the replies I get is that they've never even heard of this band and they've only now basically become popular thanks to the inclusion of one of their songs, which is actually in this album, um, in Jojo's Bizarre Adventures, the, animes, uh, the animated series. This is Fragile by Yes. That cover, man. That 
cover is gorgeous. This this is, as I keep telling everybody, this is my favourite album of all time. It's this symphony, which it it's kind of strange. Because I feel like the only way you're going to get this experience is by listening to the album in chronological order. In. It feels like like a movie in a... It like tells not really a story, but tells like the the mood of a story. So when you're listening to it uh, without any stops, the moods kind of just come naturally after one and another of the song with Roundabout, which of course is the big song in this album. But you've also got Long Distance Run Around and you've also got um, Heart of the Sunrise, which are just goddamn fantastic music. Just, yeah, just, you know, you got Fish, you got, oh, what's that Sense one? Oh, it doesn't actually have an album listed on the back, a song listed on the back. But, um, yeah, this is one of my favourite albums of all time. And you'll see later why, uh, part of my dedication to this album later on in the video. So now we get into my Foreigner. I have their first album, Foreigner, which has been digitally remastered. Um, you know, Cold as Ice. Heartseeker, um, sorry, Stargazer, uh, Feels for the First Time, uh, A Long, Long Way From Home, just, you know, and I, that cover, which makes it look like a Renaissance painting, just gorgeous, man. I also like how the font um, has casted a shadow. I don't know, I just find that's really cool. Just, you know, Foreigner is, again, a very underrated band, uh, with only really... Cold as Ice is like their most popular song, and they've got a lot of lovey uh, songs. But uh, they are actually a rock band with a lot of great rock songs. Um, Jukebox Hero, of course, is a great song. And speaking of Foreigner, we also have... I can't pronounce that second word. Agent Provocator, I believe. Um, not really much to say about this album. Uh, that Was Yesterday is a great track. But um, it's all right. Like I, I don't think it's their best work by any stretch of the word. But yeah, you know, I put it on sometimes. I listen to it, and of course, digitally remastered, tidy. And then we get into my uh, Gorillas, which was actually my favorite band as a kid before I discovered um, ACDC. So that's kind of interesting. You got uh, Gorillas, their first album. Um, I love. 192000s like anyone does uh there's also i believe this is the album with uh tomorrow comes today that's got a, that's a great song in it um is clint eastwood on this oh yeah clint eastwood's on this and there's two versions of clint eastwood uh rehash yeah it's just you know i don't i really i don't know i don't know a lot of people I think they're a band that kind of lives in the 2000s now. But as somebody who, you know, was born up with 2000 music, I'm, I'm still a fan of them. And then you got uh, Demon's Day, which is easily their best album. You've got Fleetwood Inc. You've got uh, Dare in this. Yeah, Dare. You've got Dirty Harry. Um, one song which I actually don't hear a lot of people talk about. It's called Fire Come In. Out of the Mountain's Head, which actually has Bowser himself, Dennis Hopper, as the as the as the, like the narrator of a story about these villagers that uh, can't see like evil people, which is like really strange. It's a really just just listen to it if you haven't already. And then you got uh, the Fall, which I must be honest is. Easily their weakest album. Is this the one with the studio? Um, no, it's not. Yeah, I can't... Uh, looking at the listing of this in the back... I must be honest, I can't remember much about this album. Which is a real shame. I remember look, really looking forward to this and then... Listening to this and just kind of being a bit bummed out. Like... I even might even go for as far as age. Not very good. My only Linkin Park album, again, as somebody who's born in the 2000s, uh, not born in the 2000s, what am I on about? But was uh, raised during the 2000s, had my childhood in, during the 2000s. Uh, Linkin Park 
It was obviously one of those bands that um, I grew up on. This is a Minutes to Midnight album. Uh, which is really great, like, logo and the band members on there. Uh, pretty decent album. Um, not their strongest work, but it's a pretty good, pretty good, um, pretty good album. And now we go into Michael Jackson, which I have four tracks. You know, Michael Jackson is this controversial figure, but I think any, everyone can agree that, um, for better or for worse, his music, completely out of context, is just absolutely... Like, you'll never see anything like him again. So you've got Off the Wall, which is probably... Um, one of the like first big into the solo realm, you've got um, Off the Wall, you've got um, Rock With You, uh, BYT, is BYT in this? I can't actually remember, pretty young thing. I can't actually see it on the back. Huh. But yeah, um, that cover just looks really stupid in my opinion. It, it's a very unflattering photo of Michael. In my opinion. But, um, you know, it's a pretty good album. Highly recommend it. And then you've obviously got... I've got the second best-selling album with ACDC. And, of course, you can't... Your album collection isn't complete without the best-selling album of all time, Thriller. I mean, what can you say? It's goddamn... Thr oh, PYT is actually on Thriller. My apology. Human Nature, Billy Jean, Beat It, Thriller, Baby uh, Be Mine... Uh, the girl is mine. Just, I mean, what can I say about it? Everybody knows this album. It's one of the, it's Thriller, man. <laughs> and then you go from that to probably the, one of the other best Allen albums of all time. And that's bad. After Michael Jackson took a break from music, um, I believe, like, there was like a few years between the two albums. I believe Thriller came out in 1982 and then Bad came out in 1986 which um, you know you got Bad, you've got The Way You Making Me Feel, you've got but yeah I think every song here is like a really popular song. I don't think a lot of artists can say that. Uh, one, of my, one of my favorite ones is Another Part of Me. Uh, this is also, as well, considered the soundtrack to the film Moonwalker, which, if you haven't seen that, that is the strangest movie I've ever seen. Moonwalker, man. What a strange, what a very strange piece. And then you've got The Dangerous Album, which, uh, easily my favourite artwork of uh, Michael Jackson's covers. Uh, with the exception of, really, Michael himself, kind of like Peep and Tom there, it's kind of strange. Um, uh, Leave Me Alone is probably like the biggest song of this. Black and White is another one from this. Is Black and White on this? Um, I can't remember. Where's it? Black and White, yeah. Black and White's it from this. Uh, In the Closet, Jam. Oh, I love Jam. But yeah, you know, another great album by Michael Jackson. But what, you know, what do you, what do you expect, really? And then the last one I have, which is um, Invincible, which you go from like this cover, which has got this amazing artwork, kind of like an um, Edwardian like theatrical thing going on. And then you've got like this kind of generic photo of Michael's face with, for some reason, one eye is like, I don't know if you can see it, but it's like one eye is like pixelated. And I don't know why. It's it's a, such a strange cover to have for someone who is was once so big, and even the back is just really generic and bland. But the music is still good. You know, you've got Heartbreaker, you've got Invincible, of course, uh, Break of Dawn, uh, two thousand watts in this. I'm sure two thousand Cry is or Cry is on you. You know, you got you you just got some really good songs here, man. And now I've got um, the best of a ABC, which, for those of you who don't know, ABC did um, Poison Arrow. Shoot that poison arrow through my heart, that one. Um, this is where you get more into, like, the 80s pop. 
I mean, I kind of started with the 80s pop with Michael Jackson, but another huge passion of mine, which sadly isn't represented too well in my albums um, of the music I own, is that I, my, one of my huge passions is 80s music with Duran Duran, uh, Wham, and Aha being some of my favourite bands, like um, uh, New Romance, uh, Gary, Old Gary Newman. Is it Gary Newman and Gary Oldman? One of them's the actor, one of them's the singer. I keep getting those confused. But anyway, back to um, ABC. He's a, one of those musicians which I've always considered like he was a one-hit wonder. I didn't know a lot of songs of his growing up. But um, after listening to this, there's actually surprisingly a few amount of songs that I actually have heard of. I've got another uh, great hit. You've got Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Um, this one includes Mary Jane's Last Dance and Something in the Air. Which, you know, goes out saying are some really good songs. You've also got the like, track list for there. Uh, Don't Come Around Here No More is another great one. Refuge, American Girl, um, anything that's rock and roll. Just, you know, Tom Petty, man, is a legend. I would say, though, that cover is just really bizarre. Why, why is he green? Why are you green, man? And now we're going to get into uh, one of my biggest, another big passion of mine, which is um, movie soundtracks. Um, as you are all aware by now, you should all be aware, is that I'm a big movie buff. And one part of my, uh, my love of movies is the soundtracks, the score. Uh, so this is now my, where we get into the scores of them. Um, so we start off with the Best of Bond, the James Bond collection, which clicks well, the, the music that plays at the start, you know, the, the pop songs that get released. Um, so this is the, the ones from the first 50 years, which contains 50 tracks. So you got some really great bangers here. It's got Casino Royale, which is one of my favourites. You've got Diamonds Are Forever. Uh, Goldfinger is one of my favourites as well, in terms of just... Not only music, but James Bond films. Goldfinger is easily my favourite. Uh, Live and Let Die with um, Paul McCartney. And speaking of Duran Duran, I was speaking up earlier, you've got... Um, uh, oh, what's that one? Live, not Live and Let... Um, View to a Kill. You've got View to a Kill on here. So, you know, Duran Duran is represented in my, in my music somewhat. Now we got into, like, the proper scores... Uh, with uh, the soundtrack to the 1989 Batman movie. Um, strangely enough, this is my only Danny Elfman mu so soundtrack. Uh, but I had to buy this. I saw this in HMV. I had to buy it. Have you heard the music to the, eight, uh, to the 90s and late 80s Batman? It is oh, gorgeous. I mean, if you've heard... If you watch the film, you know the score, and it just really helps build that atmosphere in that film. And one of the greatest things about that film is its atmosphere. So this is actually one of the greater things about that film. It's one of my favourite films of all time. It's a lot of people's favourite film. But, but 1989's Batman classic. And now we can get into my Marvel Cinematic Universe for the moment, which I actually have quite a few. We start off with yet another ACDC. I had to kind of pick where this goes. Um, it's kind of strange because this is built up as like the soundtrack to Iron Man 2. But only two songs actually appear in the film. One of them plays in the end credits. What was the point of this? Don't get me wrong. I really love um, ACDC and the performance that they did the live performance they did for this was absolutely gorgeous but it's it's really strange this this album was released in two versions one with just the album um oh wait sorry three versions one with just the album another one that came with the score of the film and then another one which came with a cd where you can actually then like watch the live performance that acdc played um for the coming film. This one is the standard one, which I'm kind of disappointed. Um, I just kind of bought it on a whim. But yeah, ACDC's Iron Man 2, still, you know, 
It's ACDC, you can't go wrong. It's just really strange. And then, speaking of another strange album, you've got the music from and inspired by the motion picture Avengers Assembled. One song appears in the film. And it's in the credits. I don't understand why they do that. Some of these songs are actually made specifically for this album. And none of the music actually appears in the film. It's a very strange, odd inclusion to the to the MCU music catalogue. There's some really great songs here. Don't get me wrong. This is some really great, really great music in this. Um, it's kind of like all done by different brides. You've got Black Veil Brides in there. Um, uh, Live to Rise is the song for I Sungate. Um, a lot of these bands I actually don't know much about. But oh, Ever Essence is on here as well. Um, but yeah, it's kind of, it's just really, really strange that this exists. And then we get back into the actual scores of the film. You've got Thor The Dark World by Brian Taylor. Brilliant score. That theme that Brian Taylor gives for him, absolutely gorgeous. These are in chronological orders to the movies, by the way. I really want to get my hands on the Patrick Doyle's first for uh, the uh, Thor soundtrack, but it could go up for ridiculous prices. So um, I got I got this instead. But this is a really great. You know, if you haven't heard this, the soundtrack to. Thor The Dark World, I highly recommend it. It's easily one of the best things about that movie. You've got um, Doctor Strange by uh, by Michael Genozzi. If I'm pronouncing that wrong, I do apologise. Um, he really gives this movie its own unique style, its unique theme with that... Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's kind of like a, just an old piano plays in it. It gives Doctor Strange a very um, bass line thematic style to the music so when you hear this kind of music you automatically think Doctor Strange and the theme song uh, Master of the Mystic Arts is another cracking theme and I really hope that they bring it back for the new uh, Doctor Strange movie. Uh, Danny Elfman is doing the score for the second film I hope he, he reprises for reprises the theme now for some reason Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1 isn't here I do own it. I will prove it later on in the video. But for some reason, I've lost the actual case for it. It's very strange. Um, but here is volume two of Guardians of the Galaxy from the, obviously the film Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. This one only includes the the music that, you know, that's on the awesome mixtape volume two, which we were talking about Chains earlier on with Fleetwood Mac. Chains 2. This is the second time I own Chains. Um, you know, it's got a great track list on the back there. You can see. Um, you got, see Chains there. You got um, Fox on the Run, which is the only song which is actually not in the film. It actually plays in the trailers. You also got Mr. Blue Sky, which actually kind of connects this to Doctor Who, which is really funny. Um, but yeah, if you've, you hear the movie music to Guardians of the Galaxy... You know what this sounds like. And then you've got Thor Ragnarok by Mark uh, Motherbound. Motherbound. This is such a fantastic... On its own, this is easily the best like album that you can listen to on its own. His musical style is so... So just so catchy and so... You know, you can actually... I can actually like... This is probably the album I've listened to the most on its own, just the entire album. And he gives it this sort of style that really fits the movie very well in its um, Sakaar setting. I really wish they kind of brought back Thor's original theme from Patrick Doyle's original score. But um, the music here is also very well fit in for the film. You know, it's... This is... If, I have, if people ask me about, like, getting into... The soundtracks to MCU. This is easily like the first one I recommend. It is gorgeous. And then you've got the big one. Avengers Infinity War. I did want to get the soundtrack. The score. The actual score to the original Avengers. However. 
Again, that goes up for like ridiculous prices. This is the cheapest version I could get to listen into um, the original Avengers theme, which actually plays twice um, during the film in these great needle drop moments, one with Captain America and one with um, Thor. I can't remember if it plays again with Iron Man. It should do. But, you know, you've got these, you know, it's um, Alan Silvestri returning... Uh, reprising after he scored uh, the first Avengers as well as Captain America, the first Avenger. And he he has this very unique style, which uh, it's not really unique, but his style is basically the foundation for your average Marvel movie. When you think MCU music, just generally, you usually think of and Alan Silvestri's music, you know, which is has heavy focus on violins and like horns in the background, like in the distance, that music comes from Alice Vestry. And this is like, you know, this is just a really great theme. Great, you know, I mainly just bought this to listen to the Avengers theme. The, the, act, the re music around it is all right, but the Avengers theme, when it counts, really just hits hard. And then the last three CDs I have um, are all John Williams scores. Uh, John Williams, of course, he is like the biggest movie um, composer of all time. And the fact that he's still going to this very day as a very old man is just dedication to how amazing he is. But anyway, you've also, you've got Star Wars A New Hope soundtrack. I plan to get like all the Star Wars soundtracks, but this is the only one I own for the moment. It's Star Wars. What can you say? It's, you know, everybody knows the music to Star Wars. That kind of blend of samurai music score and Egyptian score and Western score all melded into one in a sci-fi film, which somehow not only works, but it's Star Wars. You know, it's Star Wars. Now you've got this really cool... Uh, Superman the Movie Soundtrack uh, by John Williams. Uh, this one's actually performed by the London Symphony Orchestra, which is really cool. Um, you know, if you've heard the so Superman soundtrack, of course you would know it's absolutely awesome. Uh, but here, um, on its own, you know, it, you just learn to appreciate the score in, its, in a very unique way uh, outside from the, from the movie. You know, John Williams, you could just listen to John Williams music without the movies. It's really cool. And then you've got um, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, Stone soundtrack, uh, which, you know, John Williams scored that as well. You know, there's so many movies that he scored, it's kind of ridiculous. But um, this is going to start of a, like a new era for John Williams. And a lot of people do criticise his more recent work of sounding like Harry Potter especially the more recent Star Wars films, having very Harry Potter-y elements to it. But I don't mind it. I don't, I, you know, I don't mind. Uh, because I, I, you know, I really do like the Harry Potter soundtrack. It's one of my, uh, John Williams at his best. Sure, sure, it did influence his music to a point where it sounds like he's just composing Harry Potter for the rest of his life. But, you know, there's a reason why he does that. And that's because it just sounds really cool. So there you go, that's my CD, that's my CDs and my albums. However, I now also own vinyls. Yeah, this is something that I'm really passionate about and, you know, a lot of people would be fed up of me just talking about, like, old m formats, especially when it comes to, like, um, movie for video formats and audio formats. So, for my birthday one year... Um, so, uh, my family member bought me a vinyl player and a few vinyls and it's become a kind of like an obsession recently. There's, you can get some really cheap secondhand vinyls and it's just kind of become this like really fun hobby of mine buying these vinyls and it's kind of pushed my interest in music a lot more. So anyway, uh, let's not waste any more time. Let's, let's, let's show you my vinyl collection. This one um, is the the first album, ACDC. Again, ACDC. Um, you can clearly see why they're my favourite band. Uh, this is their first album, High Voltage, which 
is actually, you know, different from the Australian version. I don't know why they do that. Um, but TNT, uh, high voltage, which isn't actually in the original high voltage, which is really strange. She's got balls. She's got the jack, uh, live wire. It's a long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. You know, it's a classic album. And this is kind of like an alternative cover. This isn't actually like the main cover. This is like a limited edition or something. That is gorgeous. That comic bookish art style is stunning. And it captures Bon Scott and Angus Young perfectly. Look at that. Um, this one is actually a single. Uh, for those of you who don't know, you had uh, you uh, usually had like these two types of vinyls. You have usually like albums, and you usually have then singles, which are like a smaller version. But this is actually like a large single, which only holds like two songs and is played at a different speed. Uh, you got Heatseeker and Go Zone and I Snake on side B, and that is just one awesome cover. This is. Uh, this song is in, I believe it's in the Blow Up Your Videos. So I own this twice. The songs and this anyway. Um, but, you know, I just re I just bought it because, you know, it was ACDC. And I was like, if I, I found it like for £4. So, really cool. Uh, this is a live constant concert. Sorry. Live constant. I can't say it. Live concert. There you go. That they did, um, which is actually a two vinyl set. And if you can open it up, this is one of like the cool things about vinyls is that you can like open them up and you can like look at these like stunning artwork. You got like all of the um, all of the people credited on this and stuff. It's just really cool. And then you've got like the album listing on the side. This is just a really fun listen to. Uh, I'll have to get the CD for this. Uh, not the CD, the DVD for this to watch it live, like, but you know, it's just really cool. Now we go to um, Fleetwood Max Rumors, which is probably one of the best albums of all time. This is easily like my second favorite album of all time. And you know, you've got Go Your Own Way, you got Dreams, which is one of my favorite songs, easily my favorite. Uh, actually, no, yeah, it is Dreams is my favorite uh, Fleetwood Max song. You've got Never going back again. Don't stop. Um, you know, oh daddy, golden dust girl. But what's important for us is that it has chains. So this is what the third chains I own. That's three chains. Um, yeah, this is the third chain. No, it's not. Yeah, third chain. And my favourite album on vinyl as well. When I started collecting vinyls, I made it a mission to find this album. And the price of these go absolutely high. I went to my local store and they actually had a copy for 20 quid which I thought was actually pretty reasonable for how great this album is and I was just blown away by the quality of the music on the vinyl like it is gorgeous and you get a better look at this artwork look at that and you got the back of it and obviously I think I think this one opens up as well so you can get a better look inside the inside it which I can't because it's in a plastic at the moment but you know I've already talked about this album before but you know I own it twice on CD and on vinyl my dream now is to get it on cassette <laughs> I just want to buy this album on every format I can maybe I'll make a video on music format and I can use this as an example so yeah yes fragile grey album and then we have another um, yes album we have Go In uh, For The One which um, is a really strange one I mean early yes is very strange as it is it kept the logo 
However, they fired the artist who did their covers prior to this um, as they had a fallen out with the vocalist um, and the, the artist who did the who usually does these. So instead we have this more modern with this naked man on the cover. It's really bizarre and I gotta be honest, I'm not really too keen on it. It kind of looks kind of ugly and I don't know why there's a naked man on there. And all the lines and the 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 colours on it. I don't know. I just it just really didn't appeal. But I bought this for eight pounds, so it you know, it was worth it. The music's really good though. You know, it's yes, it's it's the early stuff, which is stuff I personally like more, which is a bit more experimental. They kind of became more mainstream as time went on. But you know, I I, I find them a really unappreciated band. And now we have two Elvis. Well, um, there's something that you got to know about me is that I love Elvis. And my obsession, <laughs> obsession, my appreciation for Elvis music is only now heightened now that my brother has also gotten into Elvis and he's become kind of obsessed with it. So we in the family, we kind of have this like running gag of us two like singing Elvis together and stuff. Uh, but he's you know, he's like the main one in the family that likes Elvis. But as you can see, I'm also a huge fan of Elvis. Uh, this is the Girls, Girls, Girls soundtrack with um, some really great tracks. You've got uh, Return to Sender. Oh man, just looking at this list. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to. We'll be together, girls, girls, girls. Just a roller coaster of a soundtrack. I haven't actually seen any Elvis movies, but the soundtrack's always good. And I bought this three pound tidy, and it's in stereo as well. Which this this album wasn't actually made in stereo. It was made in mono, so it's converted, and it is kind of obvious. But still a good album, nonetheless. And then you have the big one. Oh, yes. You know it is. It's the comeback special. 60... When was it? The 69? 69 comeback special. For those of you who don't know, uh, big uh, Elvis had this big, like, return. And it was one of the biggest live performances it was, I believe it was the first live performance to air on television and it starts off with trouble which leads into um which leads into guitar man and it just knocks your bloody socks off we also have um if i can find it uh there's this mix between Heartbreak Hotel, Hound Dog and All Shoot Up. That is easily one of the best performances he's ever done. I mean it's Elvis. What can you say? How could you go wrong with Elvis? Uh, this one uh, was bought to me by my brother. Uh, Motorhead, Ace of Spades. Great song, you know. Uh, Lenny will be missed but what an what a legacy he left behind um what a, what a great album i mean everybody knows ace of spades but you got to love me like a reptile you've got live to win you've got fire fire dance bite the bullet just some really great song and this cover is really striking it has this like western feel it reminds me kind of like the good the bad and the ugly um, but yeah, there's something about the vinyls is that you can really learn to appreciate the arts on these. It's just gorgeous. Just really, just really well done. And then you got the uh, High uh, Indefinitely by Ario Speedwagon. I only bought this for like £4. I just thought, you know, I like Ario Speedwagon. I didn't, I just looked at this. I saw the name Ario Speedwagon, saw that it was £4, thought... I like Ario Speedwagon. 
I'd love to just, you know, uh, you know, maybe I buy a cheap album. Maybe I would only recognize maybe one song, but I, you know, I get to learn new songs. Turns out I recognize every song that's on this album, as in like they're really popular. Uh, Take it on the run. Uh, you know, you got don't let me go. Keep on loving you. You know, keep on loving you. Just shaking it loose. Someone tonight. I wish you were there. Just. Oh, man. Just are you speedwagon, man? And it's like um, art cover, which has this kind of 1980s noir, um, 1950s inspired art style. Just really cool, man. Just really cool. And, you know, it's got this kind of hint of a... Um, sexual nature with the woman uh, in the foreground there and I don't know, I just think it, I just think it looks really cool and now we go to one of the best albums ever made Meatloaf's Bad Out of Hell written by Jim Starman yeah this is one of the few albums which they actually credit the actual writer for because a lot of people don't know this but it was actually written as uh, Jim Starman wrote the entire album before Meatloaf was even involved. He wrote it originally for a musical adaptation, a futuristic version of of Peter Pan and Neverland, which didn't uh, which didn't sadly make it, but it inspired him just to make an uh, a, a, um, an album. And then he found Meatloaf, and the rest, you could say, is history. You've got Bad Out of Hell. You've got Two Out of Three Ain't Bad. And one of my favourite... My favourite song on this is uh, Paradise by the Dashboard Lights. You know, Meatloaf is this... He's really corny, uh, really rock and roll, really, like, um, uh, pantomime kind of style about him. But it's just... I don't know, it just really works. And I do plan on getting Bad Out of Hell uh, 2 and 3. It only cost me 10 quid as well. Tidy. And then we have um, Amazing Mix Volume 1 and uh, God is Galaxy Amazing Mix Volume 2. These are just the actual soundtrack, the music, the actual like songs I play. So you've got um, the first one, which has Hooked on a Feeling. You've got um, Moon Age Dream, uh, Daydream, uh, Fooled Around and Fell in Love from the first film. And then you've got the, from obviously the second film, um, which again, I own on, C on CD, which if you bear with, I just wanted to prove that I do actually own them on a CD. Um, so, you know, I've shown you uh, Volume 2 in the CD collection, but I put um, Volume 1 soundtrack with the with the movie itself. You've got then Awesome Mix Volume 1, which is the, the, the actual soundtrack, and then you've got the, the actual score by uh, Taylor Bates. So, yeah, that's really cool. Um, but the interesting thing about this, for me personally, is... With volume two, it has chains. So I own this chains. So I own chains on this. I own chains on the original CD version. I own chains on the rumored um, vinyl. And I own chains on the Fleetwood Mac um, Greatest Hits compilation CD. So I own that song four times. I don't know why. It's a really good song. And I'm not ashamed that I own it four times, but it's just funny how I own that one song four times. It's just really, really cool. And then the last album to show you um, is a compilation. Sorry, I can't say that song. Uh, say a compliment. Best of then a uh, classic rock anthems volume two, which is actually one of the first vinyls. Actually, yeah, when I got my vinyl, um, it came with these three albums at least they were bought 
at the same time. So we've got, you know, and you've got like this really kind of generic, kind of like um, public domain art style onto it. But, you know, it really works, you know, the purple and the, the city lights. You know, it's not a dull image by any stretch of the word. It's just, um, it's just, you know, it's just, I don't know, it's really cool. And then you've got like the listing, which you can actually see like on the opening side. You've got Toho's Africa. You've got Bonnie Tyler's Hold Out for a Hero. Uh, oh, got Meatloaf there again. Uh, Dead Ringer for Love, that's the one we did with Cher, which says it there. Journey. Um, I believe there's another journey here somewhere. No. Hmm, that's strange. Um, Aerosmith, Walk This Way. That's the, uh, as you can see, the uh, run DCM, uh, DMC uh, version. Got f uh, oh, that's another Fleetwood Mac, Black Magic Woman. Why did Bla why does Fleetwood Mac keep popping up? Oh, look, there's another one I also own as well. Ario Speedwagon's Taken on the Run, which is on the um, high, on the high album I also own. So there's a lot of um, so I, there's a lot of like a handful of songs which I own like multiple times, which is really bizarre. But um, yeah, that's the back. If anyone's interested, it's just so much more. It's just a generic, you know, of the list. But you can actually, you know, it stands out. On the dark with the, the white right then so it's really cool and uh there you go let's just have this have this was much better image to end it on so there you go that's my albums uh both cd and vinyls uh, i hope you enjoyed i hope you know it gets you inspired to start collecting music in physical format you know it's very important to own music in in physical format if not, of anything, just to show how much you're passionate about something and it's just something, you know, to keep it there, but also as well to keep just the industry going. And it's, I don't know, I just think it's really cool just to own things on physical matter. And it's a dying art form, which sadly collecting stuff on physical media. So I hope you enjoyed this episode, the return of Maki Dam's universe of collecting. So that's all the music. I'll see you next time, whenever that will be.